I'm Bobby. I'm Branson. And you're watching. <laughs> Learning with Bobby and Brent. <laughs> We're back for another episode of Learning with Bloopy and Blant, Bobby and Brant, Bloopy and Flant, Squib and Squamp. And today we're gonna go over a little something called color correction. Ooh. But specifically, a certain plugin of color correction within Adobe Premiere. What's it called, Brent? It is called Lumetri Color. Here Lumetri we go. Color. That's a pretty epic name. It right? is pretty epic, especially when you say it in a deep voice like that. Yeah. So basically, um, whenever we shoot something here on Now You Know, or whenever you're shooting anything for your project, most of the time the footage you're going to get probably doesn't look exactly the way you want it to be in the end. So for pretty much everything you record, you're going to have to do some form of color correction. There was a while where we weren't even color correcting anything. We didn't even really know about it. Yeah. And um, so we're going to kind of show you what you can do with Lumetri Color. So first thing we're going to do here is we have a little shot here. This is from this week's episode of In Depth, Tesla Time In Depth. Or Out of Our Depth. Or Out of Our Depth. And we've got Zach and Jesse here, jibbing and jabbing, squeebing and squabbing, as we are tend one to do. So I'm going to drag that into our project, into our timeline down here. So now we can see the boys in action. There they are. So right now, I actually have my um, projects set to um, color correction window, the color correction um, workspace. If you were to go to, say, um, Windows here and Workspaces, Premiere has a bunch of different uh, workspaces already built in. We have a couple of our own little ones we made ourselves, so you can make your own. But there is one already built in for color. So I'm going to go to that one here, because it gives us this little window on the side here. It builds in the Lumetri color. It gives us this nice window here that makes it nice and easy to work with. That's so convenient. It's right it there. is super convenient. If you wanted to, you could go into the effects down here in the color, or in the corner here. And you could search Lumetri color. If you prefer to just drag it and drop it on, like so, then you could go in here and then use this in your effects control panel. Um, but I personally prefer this over here. I like the sliders. The sliders are really nice. I like the look of it. It just it feels to be a little bit different, a little bit more of a visual tool. Yeah, definitely. It, you can kind of see better what you're doing. Like, for example, um, there's a few different windows here. We have our basic correction, which is your basic color correction. We have our creative suite, which kind of does some more kind of cool film, kind of fancier stuff. And everyone will go over that. We have our curves, which you've probably seen us use before in some other projects, you know, namely like our 80s video one. So you got your different channels here of your curves. You can adjust the colors that way. Um, we also have our color wheel, which again is another way to manipulate some of the colors within the um, Lumetri color. We will probably go over that a little bit later. Um, secondary colors, a little bit more of an advanced area where you really can fine tune some stuff. And we probably won't go over that one quite as much. And then we got a vignette here, which um, gives us a little, this guy here, a little vignette. That's a really cool little feature. Yeah, yeah. It's, this can be really nice to add a little subtle, kind of brighten things up a bit. But those are your basic menus here. And um, one th advantage of working in this screen as opposed to um, dra dropping the effect on your clip down here and working over here is you have some nice uh, visual um, things over here, some nice visualizations of what each of these tools do over here. So like normally if you were looking at temperature, you'd be like, okay, I mean, I guess hot and cold, um, but you actually get a visual representation here. The more we warm it up, the more orange it is. The more we cool it off, the more blue it is. So it kind of gives it that little bit, it's subtle, but that little bit of visualization kind of helps you kind of figure out what you need. So like in this clip, I don't know, it's a little cold looking, so maybe I want to warm it up a little bit. Probably not a lot, but maybe a little bit. Um, another thing too to kind of keep in mind is you have this little checkbox here where you can kind of use as a way to do some A-B comparisons. So you can kind of see where we were going. Um, so we'll turn that back on. Another thing that's cool too is like tints. Like you, off the top of your head, tint, you might not exactly know what that means just from looking at this. So it's cool to look over, over here and be able to see that, okay, what they're saying, by what they mean by tint is this makes things more green, this makes things more of a pinkish, purplish color. So that's good to know. And this is all within the white balance section. So turn this down a bit. Um, somewhere in here to me is looking a little bit better. They're looking a little more lively and less green. Yeah, I've, I've less hulkish. Yeah. <laughs> they're not like they're not about to just hulk out on you guys. Huh. 
Zach, just see, look at Zach's just mean mugging us right now. He's about to Hulk out on you. But now he's just looking a little more pensive. All right. Yeah. So that's better. Um, another thing I'm noticing right now is this shot could maybe be a little bit brighter. So we can go down here to our tone area and just exposure. We gotta lower it down, make it real dark and moody, Zack Snyder style. Whoa. That is Zack Snyder-y looking. Yeah, or we can really brighten it up and make it look oh. like they're going towards the light or something. Yeah. They're about to get abducted by aliens, arrival style. That's what it looks like. All right, so we can uh, double click this if we want to reset it back to zero. And then from here, let's uh, just brighten it up a little bit. We don't want to overdo it. Yeah, you can very quickly uh, overdo exposure. Definitely. Go in one direction too much. So. Right, and as you're going to see, some of these other parameters we have here are going to do some similar things to brighten things up. So we don't want to overdo it here because as we start adjusting some of these other uh, parameters here, we might find that we're making it too bright. All right, so then next we got our contrast, which kind of is means like the difference between your darkest colors and your brightest colors. So if you turn it all the way up, it really accentuates the differences between the brighter stuff and the darker stuff. Or you can turn it all the way down and it flattens everything out mm -hmm. where all the dark and bright stuff looks very similar. Um, I personally like a little bit of contrast to boost it up a bit to really make things kind of pop out. So as you can see here, some stuff's really starting to pop here. Like the jackets and stuff are really starting to kind of stand out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're kind of losing some of that kind of haziness or muddiness in the shot. Then we got highlights, which are kind of like the lighter stuff, the bright, the way the light hits. It kind of accentuates or de-accentuates that. Um, in this particular shot, um, I'm not exactly sure. I might want to brighten it a little bit or maybe even turn it down. What do you think, Bobby? What are you I liking? Think maybe, uh, I think maybe the highlights are fine. Yeah, maybe we'll just leave middle. that. Leave that right at zero. If you can't decide if it's down or up, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Then we got shadows, which again is kind of the opposite of highlights, so it kind of accentuates or de accentuates the dark spots. That's what's kind of interesting. If you yeah, want like more, you if you want more shadows, you actually reduce this to accentuate the shadows. Mm -hmm. Again, Zack Snyder looking here. Never. Yeah, I think what it's trying yeah. to say is like revealing what's in the shadows by right. turning it up. It's what it's lies confusing. in the shadows. What lies in the shadows. What lies in Turn the up shadows. to see. Right. So. Again, I'm kind of liking this somewhere where it is. And now we got uh, our whites and blacks, which are what they sound like. Turn it up if you want to accentuate the whites or turn it down if they're too too hot. Um, again, I'm feeling pretty okay where they are at right now, so I'm going to leave it in the middle. All right, so next we got black here. Again, this is like shadows where if we want to accentuate the blacks, we turn them down. Or we turn it up if we want to kind of desaturate the blacks or whatever. So I'm going to turn it down just a hair, yeah, again, to kind of give us easy. some of that contrast. And then we got saturation here, which kind of like accentuates the colors or desaturate if you want to make it black and white. I usually like to add a little bit of saturation. I do too. To make it a little bit more just make, colorful. Yeah, make things pop, make it seem more lively, add a little life. So next we have our creative suite here. Now this one has a few different things in it. Um, one of the really cool things to play around with here is that uh, Lumetri Color comes with some preset looks, as it describes it, here in this pull-down. As you see, there's a Whoa. whole bunch of different looks it has here. These are built-in. You can make your own custom looks, too, if you find something you like. But they have a bunch of built-in ones here, too, as you can see. There's some ones that are based on different camera styles, um, and a bunch of different ones named here. The names just have usually something to do with kind of the general look of it. Um, Gold Rush kind of has like a more of a golden, like yellowy, orangey glow to it. Um, the some, blue ones are cooler, dark, like bluish, you know, obviously. You get some matrix green down there. Matrix green. So you kind of get the idea of what each of these are. And then there's these different camera ones. Now let's just try a couple out. So we got this one here. We can see this one's like really adding a lot of contrast, um, making everything kind of look dark, yeah, dreary. Let's try. We got some monochrome ones, which are some black and white styles. Some of the monochrome ones are really nice looking. Yeah, they definitely give you some really cool looking stylized looks here. Um, we can go blue ice, as you can see. Yeah, that's a really cool one. It makes their eyes pop. Look at those blue eyes. And we got um, some clean ones here. These ones are kind of maybe a little more straightforward. So you can see them going back and forth here. Adding a little bit of contrast here. Kind of gives it maybe a little bit of a darker bluish tinge to it. Yeah. Now as you play for each one of these there's this button here that or 
a parameter here called intensity. You can either turn that up to really accentuate whatever the effect is or turn it down, kind of based on whatever you want. Mm. Um, I'll pick a more extreme example so you can really see what's going on here. So you can really turn it up or turn it all the way down if you mm. don't want it at all. So kind of play around with it. I'm going to go with something a little more extreme just so you can kind of see what's going on here. Mm. So I'll put this back to 100. So it's actually really cool too. If you flip through the arrows on the right and the left there to kind of scroll through the different looks, you can actually just uh, apply that look by double clicking on the little picture right there. Yeah, so I like this one right here. So we're going to go with that. So, yeah, or so if I wanted to cool. and I changed my mind, I could go, uh, buh, buh, buh. you know, let's go with this one instead. Yeah. And so boom. I think that's a really cool, quick, easy way to. Yeah, it's this way to, it. to audition some different uh, looks here. Mm -hmm. And again, you can adjust the intensity or whatever, increase it, decrease it using this guy here. Now there's some other little parameters here that we got we can play around with. It. One Ooh. is called faded film, Ooh. which, as it sounds, gives you this kind of film look, this it's kind of artsy, yeah, artsy fartsy look here. You want to make it look like this is kind of older, more dramatic footage yeah. here. Said no. as we're talking Said about the CEO uh, of Uber truck. So whatever, some Tesla stuff <laughs> here, and it's very very artsy mm. it's very dramatic what's Low about contrast. to happen here yes so that is the faded film look there now we have sharpen i like to use sharpen a little bit for our shots it kind of just gives a little more detail um it really kind of accentuates the edges on things a little bit yeah so if we were to crank this all the way up just kind of really drive home the point here you can kind of really see a lot of the details like in the hairs and stuff and now if we were to turn it all the way back down to zero and look again, it's a little more dull, a little less defined. So I like to use yeah. a little bit of Sharpen just to kind of give it a little more of an HD look, you know, mm. kind of accentuate some of the details. Then we have Vibrance here, which is kind of similar to Saturation. Yeah, very similar. Um, it seems to only affect certain colors. Mm. As you can see, like if I turn this vibrance all the way down, there's still some of this blue shining through here. Some of this extra. Yeah, so it's, it's not, not quite saturated. It's not. It's not quite saturated. It's a little bit different. Mm. It's almost like color highlights as opposed to just colors, which saturation more controls. As you can see here, if I turn that all the way up, everything's really bold. All the colors are right popping out. Turn it all the way down. There's no colors. Black and white. Black and white. And we got curves here, which we've shown you before in some other videos. You know. Kind of how I get the idea what curves are. Yeah, you can use curves for a lot of different things. You know, it's really personal preference. Um, coming up with some really cool, you know, different looking styles with curves is uh, usually what I would do. Yeah, as you can see here, I'm right going hog wild with the curves. Yeah, Just they're definitely more stylistic in my opinion. We've got our color wheels here. You can adjust your shadow colors and the intensity of those. Your mid-tones. Maybe I want to do red mid-tones here. Whoa. Again, getting really funky with it. Green for our highlights. And now we got like some like this looks like I don't know like puke. Yeah, <laughs> kind of looks like I don't know what's that movie Twenty Days Later or something like uh, a yeah. zombie attack or whatever. I kind of feel like I gotta look over my shoulder, make sure I'm not about to get jumped by some zombie that's about to scream through the window. <laughs> and again, double click to undo all this stuff. And secondary colors, we got a lot of stuff going on in here. Yeah. Um, this this is, might overwhelm you. Yeah, this is a little intimidating. All right, and we're going to jump, move right ahead over here. Double click to set that back. We're going to go into vignette now. Now, this is kind of a cool little subtle thing we can use here. As you can see, like Bobby was saying before, because they Zach just shoot in the Tesla, the lighting isn't always the best. Um, it's really hard to kind of get the light in the Tesla. I mean, you get whatever natural sunlight comes through the windows, but it's kind of, you can't really like light them without like opening the windows and it's winter, it's cold. Yeah, um, we don't want to freeze, we don't want to ice them out while they're trying to, you know, deliver you all your juicy EV news. <laughs> so we kind of have to work with what we got here. So one thing we can do to kind of add some more light to the exterior here is add a vignette. So we have our amounts here. So if we adjust this up, you'll start to see the edges are kind of getting brighter and brighter. Mm. So if we undo this here, you can kind of see here, 
what's yeah, happening. That's looking really it kind of clear. It kind of clears things up a bit. It also kind of draws your focus to what you want it to be on. So we can make some adjustments here. So I'm gonna actually boost this up really high so we can kind of see what's happening here. So we got our midpoint here too. So we can adjust where this is. So it looks the almost like it's freezing, like yeah, like an icy yeah border. Definitely. So we can adjust this to kind of see how much we want to see our where our midpoint is. So we can have a vignette really come really far in here if we really want to kind of just brighten everything up a bit, or we can really back it off so it's really just the edges, mm -hmm. and then you can adjust your brightness accordingly. You can also turn it down more if you want to darken the edges a little bit, which can be a cool way to draw focus too, but usually when you use it in that way, you're drawing focus in, I would say maybe in a negative way. So like yeah. you use it a lot in like horror movies and stuff. If you're maybe like fall, like looking from the perspective of say like, I don't know, like our protagonist is walking down a hallway and we're falling behind them and they have a dark sort of vignette around them. That yeah. is kind of like an interesting way to kind of like suggest that this person's being followed by like something malevolent or whatever. So it's kind of a cool way to do that is with this kind of vignette effect. You would notice it more if I did it like this. Yeah, and the way I like to do it too is I think it's really fun to take the feather and, uh, and maybe bring that down all the way so that you can see, you know, the shape that you're creating with the yep. vignette. And then later on you can, you know, add the feather to sort of finish it off. It right. just helps, you know, get a clearer, uh, idea of where you want your focal point to be definitely when you're creating it so yeah that's a nice tool to have it's a really cool tool i like it another thing we can do here is we can also adjust the roundness of our vignette yeah so we can manipulate um as you can see here we can make it be circular like that and then we can feather it out and this is kind of what it would look like you know again almost mm -hmm. creates like a little bit of like a odd spotlight here so focuses your attention in this area here mm -hmm. or we can also create this kind of more square shape like this. More of a dream sequence type. Yeah, it's got kind of a dreamy look to it and if you feather it out. Yeah. So again, just kind of a nice tool here to kind of draw attention. And let's, I'm going to reset some of this stuff, kind of go for more, more of a subtle one, just to kind of, the way I would normally use it. Yeah. And if we go here, we go back over to our Lumetri color here, we can see what we started with. And let me blow it up a little bit so you can kind of see better what's going on. So this is what we started with, and, and this is what we is. ended with. So kind of an extreme example, just so you can really see what you can do with it. Yeah, you can do it very subtly, or you can do it as eye-poppingly as you want. But Absolutely. it's all up to you. That's the beauty of the metric color, is that you can decide sort of what you think looks good, and you've got all the tools to do it right here. So Absolutely. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial, and you guys are going to you know, utilize your Lumetri color here and make some really cool looking stuff. And it's a really easy, it comes with Premiere, so if you have Premiere, you, it's a really cheap, easy way to make your footage look really cool, really cinematic, yeah. so. And, yeah, so. That's that's Lumetri color. That's Lumetri color for you. So thank you for watching this episode. If there's anything you would like to see us do, please comment below. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, remember to like and subscribe the video, um, maybe buy a super bouncy ball, do some cool artsy footage with that. I mean, oh, just no. check out these super ball skills here. Now you know. Oh yeah, check yeah. this out right here. This right? is going to be our end plate. chair. <laughs> Lost it. It's <laughs> That's actually probably a better. Yeah, it seems to work because you get the big guy there. Yeah, and it's big <laughs> until you're done. Yeah. All right. I like it. That's what she said. And then another thing we can do here. <laughs> Is that it. Liam Neeson? It wasn't intentionally, but it could be. What lies in the shadows? See, that's what I heard. Batman. Raj <laughs> <laughs> Ghoul here. All right. So that kind of makes things pop Ooh, out a sorry. bit. Oh no, Bobby kicked forget that the, the filing cabinet. Again. How dare he? I was trying not to yawn on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like focusing too much on that. For I focusing. Like, I was like, like, oh god. Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't do it! Don't want commenters making fun of me. <laughs> anyway, back to the Sorry. This is what happens when you eat Chipotle. Nah. Ah, my eye hurts so bad. Oh, you'll be alright. What even is this? <laughs> I don't know. What is this? Yo, guys, what is this thing? Explain this to me. <laughs>